Hey everybody, welcome to the latest edition of the Apostrophe Show. My name is Ian Robert Innocent and I have a great show for you today. Today, I'm going to show you one of the most beautiful places I've ever lived in Europe. Uh, an incredible service, absolutely inspiring, a uh, wonderful museum, and the essential topic of money and how to get how to get ahead financially. So here we go. Let's get right into it. Have you ever heard of Montenegro? Most people haven't. Before I lived there, the only time I heard about it was in the in Casino Royale, the James Bond movie, because M says to James Bond, he said they're gonna have a high stakes poker game in Montenegro. It's the only time I've ever heard of Montenegro. However, Montenegro is to the east of Italy, right across the Adriatic Sea. And if you look at Montenegro on a map, on the west coast of it, along the water here, towards the upper west coast, I guess we'll call it, if you zoom in there, you're gonna see the water sort of come in into the land, and it's kind of in the shape of, let's say, wings of an angel, okay? Think of wings of an angel, and around that, around the outline of that, of those wings, would be incredibly tall mountains. It's a visually stunning place. And of course, because it is in Europe, all the architecture there is the beautiful old stone with the orange tile roofs, and the water comes directly to the edge of this little town here. I don't know if it's a town or a village, whatever we call it. And there's, there's beautiful restaurants right along the water. Uh, a lot of the, the places, a lot of the buildings have foliage on it. And when you're walking through Paras here, you're surrounded by mountains all around you. Like in the distance, you see mountains to the left of you. It's all mountains. Uh, it's an absolutely stunning place. And there's a beautiful church there. And talking about churches, they actually have two churches on two little islands directly in front of Paras. I've never seen a church on an island. Paras has two of them. And like I said, there's restaurants all along the edge there. And so if you're there when the sun is setting, and I should mention that the restaurants are literally on the edge, there's no railing. So you can fall off into the water. That's how close it is. But as the sun is setting behind the mountains, the mountains turn pitch black. And the other little villages around the edge here, the lights start to go on and it's such a beautiful thing to see. You know, if you want to take a vacation out that way and let's say you don't have the money for Italy because Italy is very expensive, Take a look at Montenegro, specifically Parast, that whole Couture Bay area, just wonderful. Now, what happens if you can't see any of these beautiful things? Well, I saw this tweet from, let's say, Stephen at, at Ellsmove, with two O's, Ellsmove underscore. He said, so I downloaded this app called Be My Eyes a while ago. You get FaceTime calls from blind people all over the world and help them with whatever tasks it is they need help with. I just got my first call and helped this lady pick out almond milk. Something so small made her day. I didn't think that was real, so I had to look it up. But yeah, there's something called Be My Eyes. And right on the homepage on the website, it says, see the world together. Be My Eyes connects people needing sighted support with volunteers and companies through live video around the world. How beautiful, how wonderful, what a great use of technology this is. And further down the page, so there's two sections. It's sort of, so on one side, it says blind and low vision. It says access visual information with ease. And on the other side, it says volunteers. Simplify tasks for people with low vision. What a, a lovely, beautiful thing. You know, there's a lot of awful things going on in the world today. But when I see this, I'm like, you know what? There's hope for the future of humanity when I see people taking time out of their day to help other people. Uh, with the vision. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm so happy that something like this exists. Now, talking about visually interesting things, the United States Olympic and Paralympic Museum, I believe it's in Colorado, the actual building on the outside, it's, it's so beautiful. It looks like an art sculpture, basically. It's giant. It looks metal. I don't know if it's metal. It looks metal. It might be even triangular from, from above. It's really big. I was going to talk sort of about the architectural part of this, which is visually stunning from the outside. But what's more interesting is what's on the inside. So one of their more popular exhibits, and I actually pulled it up on my phone here to tell you about it. One of the more popular exhibits is called Athlete Training. And so you can see that there's on the screen here for, for people on YouTube, but for audio listeners, let me explain it to you. There's uh, five pictures here. So it looks like a kid's maybe sort of skiing 
and he has a screen in front, kind of like a video game, but for skiing. And then there's maybe a kid, uh, maybe looks like he's gonna do the long jump. And then there's someone with a bow and arrow, but it doesn't look like a real bow and arrow. It looks like it has like, looks plastic, maybe with a, a rubber thing on the end so you don't hurt yourself, I guess. And then the next one is a kid touching, uh, touching a screen. And the last one looks like they have a track indoors. I was like, that's, that's incredible. So on their website, it says, uh, speed includes a running simulator. I think that's probably the one on the track. Aim, this is the one with the bow and arrow. It says, demonstrates a virtual archery bow and target. How cool is that? I would love to do that. Uh, strategy, uh, pauses a sled hockey game for you to determine what the player should do. Uh, mental visualization requires memorizing a sequence of maneuvers to get to the bottom of a ski hill. That's probably the one in the top left. And then reaction, uses motion tracking to test your reflexes in goal ball. Never heard of that. But apparently it's a sport played by visually impaired athletes. I love the idea of going to a museum and being able to physically interact with the exhibits. Like there's definitely nothing wrong with going to a museum and looking at, let's say, a painting or you know, a vase or something like that. That's, that's fine. But if you're a museum and if you can find some way to get the visitors to physically interact with the exhibits, it's gonna be so much better, a lot more immersive. So for example, I'm just thinking, thinking out loud here. Like let's say you're like a, like a California gold rush museum. It would be a great idea if let's say out back, you, you had some shovels and you could let kids like dig for gold. So they're physically doing it. And like, that seemed like such a fun thing. And let's say you're uh, like the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. You know, I don't know if they have this, but inside they should have like a mechanical bull so you could like get on it and ride it to see what they physically have to go through, all right? So getting the visitor physically involved is gonna increase uh, the, the enjoyment of the visitor uh, in your museum. So if you can't do that, do that. And now my favorite, one of my favorite topics is money, specifically the very, very fundamental core concept of ways to make money and the ways a lot of people make a lot of money. So on the screen here, we have a drop of sweat, an equal sign, and a dollar bill. Let's make believe that the, the drop of sweat is a week's worth of work for you. The equal sign, obviously it's pretty, pretty simple, equals, and then the dollar bill, let's say it's your paycheck. So basically this is saying a week of work equals a paycheck. And that's typically how most people make money. They work for a week and then they get paid for that week. They never get paid for that week of work ever, ever, ever again. It's just one time. So here's the concept to understand here. Separating your inputs from your outputs goes like this. If let's say you took a week away from work, now of course you wouldn't be getting paid. You say, listen boss, I need to take a vacation. Take a week away from work and create something that you can sell over and over and over again. For example, maybe you can create a course. Maybe you can create some sort of ebook. Maybe you can create or start some sort of podcast or YouTube channel. Now those require, uh, you're not so much selling those things, uh, but over time that, that'll add up. But something you can, you can just resell over and over and over again. And here's why. Because once that is made, once that, that we're gonna call it a thing, whatever the thing is, once, it, once the thing is made, you can now sell the thing. You can sell the thing over and over and over again. So at some point, those sales are gonna equal what you would make in a week. And of course, that's logical. But that one week of work, you're gonna sell over and over again, right? Because you're no longer working, this product is working for you. So you're gonna be able to sell, you're gonna be able to sell that one work a week, <laughs> one work a week. You're gonna sell that one weeks of work for you over and over and over and over again. There's no limit but there is a limit to how much you can physically work, okay? You cannot work, you know, 365 days straight, you'll burn out. You cannot work 24 hours a day, you'll die. So there is a cap to how much you can physically work, but there is no cap to how many times you can sell a digital product. And there's, there's no cap to how many times someone can buy your course, okay? So it's a different way of thinking about money. Take the time to create products that work for you so that way you don't have to do it. Does that make sense? I hope so. So talking about things that are that will make money. Uh, my wife and I have been traveling on the world for the last almost three years at this point, and we're in the process of writing a book about it. 
interesting of, based on what I was just talking to you about. Uh, so for those, we're, we're having a series of three books, one for each year. And during the first few years, um, we've dealt with a lot of awful COVID restrictions. Um, a lot of um, a lot of places were shut down and we, we couldn't, like when I tell someone, oh, we're traveling around the world, what they think of is, oh, you can just go wherever you want. That's not the case. That's not the case at all. Not, not even today, no, but even back then, it was so much more restricted because of COVID. But watch this, the book's not available now, but watch this space here, watch this show going forward and uh, we'll let you know when it's ready. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.